the United States and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, as well as the Gulf Cooperation Council countries, are helping fuel an insurgency in Syria. Uh, just uh, a few uh, months back, the Syrian government asked for opposition figures to put and the insurgents to uh, put their weapons down and to come to talks. The State Department immediately uh, immediately um, opposed this. They have no interest in in seeing the fighting stop at all. Uh, they've gotten the Arab League to go along with them, and they want the fighting to continue. They are sending weapons in through Lebanon, Turkey, Iraq, Jordan. Uh, there's been talk about possible uh, uh, assassination attempts on, on President al-Assad. Uh, just a few days ago, uh, one of the heads uh, uh, of a hospital was killed. So when you kill heads of hospitals and um, you target uh, civilians, I've met people who've left homes. Uh, I was just in uh, Mexico in December, and I left. I met with Syrians who left homes who told me that professionals were being targeted. You know, people like doctors and, and lawyers. So uh, it, this is definitely a, a humanitarian crisis that that uh, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization wants. The uh, the American government is behind uh, the weapon smuggling, along with uh, the Gulf Cooperation Council, and we cannot forget the role that Qatar and Saudi Arabia are playing in 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 Syria. So so they're playing they're replaying what they did in Libya. They've also helped bring fighters in uh, from Libya into Syria through the Turkish border. They've been training insurgents in, in, in Turkey. Uh, they've been sending funds. In fact, the, the current, uh, well, he's outgoing now. The American ambassador to Damascus was, um, was Necroponte's assistant in Iraq. And if we, anybody knows anything about Necroponte, they'll know that he helped set up the death squads in El Salvador. And then he was sent to Iraq to do the same thing. So it's not just random countries, it's countries like Turkey, like you just saw, that funnel weapons into Syria as well that the U.S. is selling weapons to in the first place. So instead of finger pointing, perhaps there's a need to rethink policy or at least take a closer look at the consequences of these actions. I've got Ivan Eland, a senior fellow at the Independent Institute here to help me break some of this down. Um, Ivan, let's talk about this stance by the U.S. Uh, selling arms to Middle Eastern countries on one hand while simultaneously criticizing um, countries that are selling arms to other ones. Well, unfortunately, the U.S. has a double standard in this regard, and you see it in Syria. Uh, as your uh, tape, uh, tape story mentioned, uh, this is uh, uh, in Bahrain. This is exactly what happened. We not only gave it to the Bahrain government, but, of course, Saudi Arabia invaded Bahrain uh, and helped the government put down the protesters there. And, of course, Saudi Arabia is one of our biggest uh, arms, arms uh, recipients. Also, Mubarak's Egypt, uh, we were, uh, the United States was slow to embrace the protesters, but then when they did, of course, it was still the arms that were uh, in contention uh, which were hovering over the entire situation and which still hover the entire over the entire situation in Egypt. Our U.S., uh, most of them are U.S. Uh, built because we give a lot of military aid to Egypt. And, uh, and there's also the issue of state sovereignty. I mean, if you, if you break down the system of world uh, sovereignty over countries over their own borders, you start running into a problem because uh, this is not a perfect system. Sometimes uh, regimes uh, do abuse their own people, but the state sovereignty system where you stay out of other people's business, that's sort of the bedrock of, uh, of the international system. Otherwise, we might have perpetual war. And so that's why that's been set up. It's a hard-nosed reality uh, that sometimes there are these uh, issues where an, a regime is not nice to its people. But on the other hand, uh, you know, uh, the United States has, has been on the other side of this supporting uh, repressive governments uh, more than on the side of the the protesters usually over.
military action against Iran to keep it from obtaining a nuclear weapon. Sixty percent of the participants in our new Fox News poll feel that way. National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin tells us the Pentagon is speeding up work on a weapon that could factor into such a conflict. The massive ordnance penetrator, a 30,000-pound bunker buster bomb that the Air Force developed in conjunction with Boeing to attack concrete bunkers and tunnel facilities, requires a, quote, urgent upgrade, according to Pentagon officials, who requested $81 million in reallocated funds from Congress to ensure that the 20 bombs are battle-ready. Defense appropriators on Capitol Hill agreed to the request this week, just one month after Iran announced it would begin uranium enrichment at a hard underground facility near the city of Colm in the Fardo mountain range. The key question, Charles, will Israel strike Iran before the election? Our own Secretary of Defense has said that it's highly likely, and he gave a time frame, April, May, June, uh, which means the Israelis think that the moment, the zone of immunity where they can no longer attack successfully is approaching. I think he's right. I think the Israelis are serious. Unless something happens between now and mid-year or even November that will threaten the regime because it won't change its policy. I think Israel will strike because it cannot live under the threat of annihilation from Iran. The other night on the online show you said 90 percent yes before the election. Unless something intervenes, I cannot imagine the Israelis are going to allow Iran to go nuclear and to hold a Damocles sword over six million Jews all over again. Israel was established to prevent a second holocaust and not to invite one. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, February 13th, 2012, and I'm Darko. Uh, my website's ggnonline.com. On YouTube, it's ddarko2012. And um, uh, recent news, new news, is that I started a new YouTube channel, ddarko2013. So please uh, try to find that. I'll uh, start posting it posting it in YouTube's video description so that you guys can subscribe because eventually I'm going to um, stop using DDarko2012 just for, um, you know, just to play it safe here so that my, all my work doesn't get pulled. Okay, so we're going to cover um, the war on terror, uh, liberty, sovereignty in this section. This first video, diplomatic inaction, fueling Syria crackdown, says UN, so the global government says um, that uh, not taking action is causing this, right? Not the weapons that are being funneled in by the same, uh, by the same groups. It says here, the UN Human Rights Chief blamed disagreement in the Security Council on Monday for encouraging the Syrian government to step up attacks on opposition strongholds in its campaign to crush an uprising against uh, uh, um, Assad's 11-year rule. So, then we have Al Qaeda. Uh, Chief urges world to back Syria rebels. So they're done over in. Um, in Libya, no, actually they got their asses handed to them uh, by Gaddafi loyalists and the real Libya people. And what happened? Oh, now they're going to be in Syria working for the United States and Israel uh, to get a regime change. It says uh, calls for army and backing the various opposition factions in Syria aren't the exclusive domain of the Arab League or even Senator Joe Lieberman anymore. That's because a new video today from Al-Qaeda leader is calling for international intervention against Bashar al-Assad. It says here, urging Muslim fighters from neighboring nations to join the rebels. Sound familiar? Just like Libya. Remember, I uh, covered that about with the, well within the past 30 days about how they were actually being trained uh, these terrorists uh, before they go into Syria. Uh, they've probably already been there, but just receiving more training. Uh, Zionists use Al Qaeda to attack Syria. That's right. So remember this article that I covered last time. Independent report contradicts Western portrait of Syria. Arab League report shows that Syria has been mischaracterized. Talk about the um, the rate of casualties and how the government's actually um, uh, working with these uh, groups, calling for a ceasefire. But then look at this uh, little propaganda piece from February 13th, 2012. Arab League proposes peacekeeping force, i.e. military force, support for Syrian rebels. It says the League, which suspended Syria in January, said its members have decided to end the previous monitoring mission because what? Because they didn't get what they wanted to hear, which was that... Um, what they were saying here, like open the channels of communication with the opposition groups. The open, if you read in this article, I'll post the link here, it says in there that they were offered, the government, Syrian government allowed them to come in and speak to both sides, the opposition and the people that supported the current government. 
Then we have active war plans. Pentagon plans U.S.-backed uh, war against Syria. It says the Pentagon has drawn up plans for military intervention in Syria. The strike would be coordinated with Turkey. We see, keep seeing Turkey all of a sudden now. Well, not really all of a sudden. They've been kind of uh, in the background. But uh, either way, Turkey is going to be a big part of this, kind of like France was with Libya, the Gulf states, and the NATO powers, according to reports that acknowledge such plans officially for the first time. The plan is described as an, an internal review by Pentagon Central Command to allow President Obama to maintain the pretense that the White House is still seeking a diplomatic solution. It says here, as with the war against Libya last year, military intervention would be justified by citing the responsibility to pr protect civilians, but its real aim is regime change. It says here, uh, a State Department official told the UK's Daily Telegraph that the international community may be forced to militarize the crisis in Syria. And the debate in Washington has shifted away from diplomacy. Remember that video covered, too, with the White House um, uh, talking head talking about, we're going we're gonna, to... Uh, Go with the diplomatic avenue, the political avenues. Uh, James Carney, the White House press secretary, said, We are, of course, looking at humanitarian assistance to the Syrian people, and we have for some time. And then lastly, the Telegraph noted, Any plan to supply aid or set up a buffer zone, maybe that means a humanitarian corridor or a no-fly zone, basically where they start killing people, civilians, would involve a military dimension to protect aid convoys or vulnerable civilians. See? And we have setting the precedent NATO may use R2P to intervene in Syria, talking about if the um, this crisis in Syria uh, continues and it forces millions of refugees to flee into Turkey's southern border. Uh, there's analysis that um, analysts, sorry, that say that it could potentially constitute an Article 5 situation, which could lead Ankara to call for a NATO collective defense initiative. And being that Russia and China both vetoed uh, the secure UN Security Council's proposal, it has led some to speculate that Turkey, along with its NATO allies, may intervene in Syria to check the growing crisis. So there you go. The, there's kind of the answer uh, as far as why is, why is Turkey getting into this now. Then we have Syria's UN envoy says UN rights report far from truth. He says the... Uh, human rights chief report about the situation in the country does not reflect the reality since it's based on testimonies by members of the opposition and armed groups. He went in there and he told the assembly that it's absolutely clear that those fighting against the Syrian government will testify against it and UN rights bodies should have based its report on testimonies from people living inside Syria, not those living in refugee camps in Turkey. In reply to the living conditions in Syria, he said that the Western-backed sanctions imposed against Damascus were to blame for the dire situation, not the Damascus government. He also accused the human rights chief of ignoring strong documents uh, proving the involvement of al-Qaeda in his country unrest. Quote, al-Qaeda has said on its website that five of its members were killed in the Syrian cities of Homs. And he says he's called on members to go to Syria and fight against the Syrian government, but they were ignored in Pillay's reports on Syria. Uh, Jafari. We have Syrian army general assassinated in uh, Damascus. This is from February 11th, 2012. Russians Putin warns against outside interference. Russia accuses West of arming Syria rebels. And we have this, what Syrian rebels deny they possess Israeli-made weapons. So we didn't hear that, but Israeli-made weapons as well. Russia changes tack and signals open to Syrian interventions. This is just recent from February 13th. I'm not sure if this is propaganda, but now they're uh, considering international intervention in Syria. China protests foreign uh, interference in Syria, and, you know, it's like China with Iran uh, not inter intervening in uh, their nuclear program. It could just be about oil, and once they get their oil from Canada, which they just sealed a deal with, maybe they'll just dump, uh, dump Iran. U.S. Navy says Iran has prepared suicide boats in the Persian Gulf. It says some of the small boats have been outfitted with large uh, warheads that could be used as suicide explosive devices. Riot police clashed with protesters across Bahrain on Monday at the first an anniversary of the country's pro-democracy uprising. We have Britain introduces kettling in Bahrain. Then Iran summons Bahrain Charged Affairs, a foreign ministry, um, after a group of people gathered outside the Iranian embassy. Israel conducting false flag ops in India and Georgia, blaming it on Iran. Talking about this, of course, which is a bunch of BS because Georgia and India are big time U.S. backed uh, countries, which are known for color revolutions and what, and false flag ta attack. Obama prepares Georgia for Iran war with Saakashvili. So we already know Mossad is training terrorists to kill Iran's nuclear scientists, but they're also using Azerbaijan to spy on Iran, says a report. 
Egypt, U.S. funded agitators on trial. It's right, U.S. democracy promotion equals foreign funded sedition. So they sent a general over and uh, threatening to cut U.S. aid. But the Muslim Brotherhood says it will affect peace with Israel. That's a bunch of propaganda.